This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Thank you. Very happy you came. Every situation in life is bringing us to new and deep understandings, moving us forward. <laughs> We live in a generation that it's revealed to, to any eye that the challenges and difficulties that we're experiencing in life are crazy, are, are wild. And many of us, many people are just losing hope and losing their ability to function in the right way because of those challenges, because of the difficulties. Now the Creator, He chose us, our souls, handpicked us from the Sea of Souls and sent us to this wild, dark, hard test in the last generation and he knows why he chose us and he knows what are the qualities that we're holding inside of our spirits that are so powerful and great and by that and because of that we'll have the ability to stand the difficulties and the challenges of this generation. The main test and the main advice that gives us the power to hold on and to survive is the fact that we are not giving up. Because there are people that can lose their minds and choose to quit even from small things that we'll consider small in our eyes. And there are other people that are stronger than them that will choose not to give up even after the worst sorrow, the worst pain. Many of our souls are children, second generation or third generation for Holocaust survivors that went through that horrible Holocaust and chose life and never gave up. And by their stubbornness and desire for life, and honest pure will to survive, we are here alive today. We can go shopping in the malls, looking for outlets, new brands, what's going on in the markets. Because that they were ready to throw themselves to the fire and to sacrifice themselves for the next generation. And we are facing a challenge in this generation that many people will consider even to be harder than earlier tests of earlier generations. And why? Because today the Yetzirah, the devil, the darkness, is not attacking us only from outside. It's attacking us from within. The confusions and the depression and the men mental sicknesses that we're carrying within, low self-esteem and self-hatred, criticism, are like plagues. And they are killing pre people, pure people. Pure people are losing their minds in, their, in those battles and people are committing spiritual, emotional and physical suicide. People are killing themselves on a daily basis if it's by hating themselves and blaming themselves. But the main challenge, the main test, it's never, never, ever to give up. Ever. And when I say never to give up, I mean that 
everyone should look deep into their hardest hours of them all, to their worst failures, to the darkest times in your lives, and to remind yourselves that in those horrible, horrific hours, you must strengthen yourselves with that knowledge that the love of the Father to His children is an unconditional love that not depends in the goodness of your actions at all. It's a love of a parent to his child. I saw people that failed. Myself, I can tell you the truth, I failed many, 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 many times, unfortunately. From one side, unfortunately. From the other side, I wouldn't be who that I am without those failures. Those failures and those mistakes and those horrible hours that I found myself losing my mind, not knowing which advice to give to myself, which adv advice to give to my children, to my wife, to my beloved ones, to my students, without being so humbled by life, I wouldn't be able today to feel and to sense and to care about other people issues, to be sensitive about other people conditions. I wouldn't have that heart that can feel and care about others if I wouldn't find myself failing in the same traps like you, like everyone else. Now when you see someone else that is failing, it's just coming to wake you up, to check yourself. It's a reminder. It's a wake-up call for you to know that you can fail as well and that you're not better than no one else and that sometimes in life things can attack you from the back and from the sides and sometimes from within. There are people that suddenly in the middle of their lives they're losing their mind. They start having nightmares and anxieties, afraid to go out of from the house, not able to talk to people, cannot choose store, shoes in the stores, not able to make shoppings, cannot go to the grocery stores, don't know what to do with themselves, losing their mind, can't stand their soulmates, can't stand their children, can't hug their children. People are facing those challenges. People are finding themselves in a spiritual Holocaust, in an emotional holocaust, feel orphans with parents, feel divorced or widows with husbands, with wives, live inside of a house and feel surrounded with enemies and those are your beloved ones. People are suffering from horrible, horrible sicknesses, emotional and spiritual sicknesses and illnesses. And we must have compassion and understandings on those people. And especially because we can find ourselves in that position as well. And the challenge and the test that the Creator is sending us for this gener to this generation, for it, for that challenge, it's only never to give up on the mercy of Hashem. Never ever to back off from spreading that word that Hashem's love is an endless love, is an unconditional love of a parent to his children. That no matter what you've done in life, there is always hope and that you will be judged in front of the King of all kings. And not in front of the rabbis that are giving classes and lecturing in these generations. They won't be those ones to set your destiny in your future life. Not this rabbi, and not that rabbi, and not that huge, gigantic one that everyone are talking about him. No. The only one that really exists in this world is the Almighty. The only one that gives life to people, to the creation, is the Creator Himself. The only one that gave birth to you and brought you to this moment is your Father in Heaven. And there is no one except of Him. He is dressing Himself in figures. He is covering Himself in shapes, in colors, in voices. 
and he is using people to transfer his message if it's a bright message and if it's a dark one and he is spreading his word and he is sending his messages to us through people that will deliver his message but we must not let those messengers to confuse us and to distract our thoughts from the simple faith to know that there is no one except of Hashem and that's the only chance for life because when you have people in your life and I mean people that you think that you should use that you think that you can lean on, that you think that they will supply something to you. If your confidence and security depends on people, you will find yourself losing your stability. You will find yourself falling. And it will be the way of the Creator to reveal His kindness on us. Why? Because He is just saving us from that mistake of counting on people, of believing in people, instead of having pure faith in the one that exists, that is the only one of truth. And we must understand that the people that are around us, that the creation that is surrounding us, is here only for one thing from our side, that we will present and show the unconditional love of the Creator on His creation. That we will be kind to our friends, that we will be nice to our beloved ones, that we will be generous and will act in the good attributes that have been given and taught to us by the righteous ones through all the ancient generations, through the Torah and the Torah Shebaal Peh, to give us those guiding lines, to give us the wisdom of how we should behave, how we should act to represent the Creator. That His love and His mercy on all of His creations is on all of His creations. And we must share that light and not to try to take advantage of people or to count on people. We're not allowed to count on rich people. We're not allowed to count on doctors. We're not allowed to count on wise people. We're not allowed to count on no one. We must count only on Hashem. And when people are in the picture, it's only that we will show the loving kindness of the Creator to all of His creations, that we will behave and will be polite and will be nice to them and going to work on ourselves. First of all is that we will stop criticizing ourselves. It's a must. It's the most important thing that we will stop criticizing ourselves and slaughtering ourselves, blaming ourselves on who we are. You are who Hashem made you to be. It's not your fault. And you couldn't prevent and stop anything that took place in your life. If you think that you could have changed your destiny, you don't have the smallest understanding in how that Hashem runs the world. The world of Hashem is above time. The world of Hashem is above the place. The world in our eyes is under the limitations of time and place. That's why we think that certain things takes time. But the world is so deep and so spiritual that we cannot figure it all out. That we cannot see the complete picture. And we must throw our wisdom away and count on Hashem with faith. Faith in Hashem, Emunah Bashem, to throw all of our wisdom away, all of our calculations and all of our conclusions, and just to follow the inner light of faith, to know that He is the source of good, that He is the source of life, and to go with that and to break all those walls of separations, to remove all the curtains of, of darkness, that exists in this world. And we have that ability and we have that power. 
And it's in our power to go and to take that message and to deliver it to our beloved ones, to our surroundings. Everyone with his narrow mind, with his low self-esteem, with his fears, and with his so-called obligations, are too terrified to go and execute, to go out and to spread the world to the world, that everyone will know Him, that everyone will count on Him. But the truth is that the Creator is waiting that we will wake up, that we will wake up ourselves and going to wake up our siblings, <coughs> that we will go and knock on doors, that we will go and knock on hearts of people and tell them, listen, here, you don't know who you are. You don't know how precious you are. How amazing and fantastic and wonderful you are. Such precious soul you are. More precious than diamonds, than gold. You're amazing. And with that you need to keep on going and working and doing all your daily obligations. You must wake up in the morning and then you need to take care of your family and to bring money to pay the bills. You must do everything and to eat and work on your diet. Yes, work on your diet. <laughs> but to do all of that while having faith. That the Creator, He is your Creator. He created you. You have not created yourself. So you cannot blame yourself. Now many people are falling in that huge question. Cannot understand. How can it be? But we received the free choice from Hashem. And Hashem gave us the free choice. And if I wouldn't choose like this, it wouldn't happen. And I made that decision. And that's why those things took place in my life. And people are blaming themselves, so to speak, with good reasons. They have good reasons to blame themselves. It doesn't work like that. It's a very deep concept. And when we want to understand how things work in this world, we must listen, open ourselves to try to understand to want to understand and also to accept it that sometimes we cannot understand it fully. From one side it is written and it's a known fact that everything that goes on in this world is happening by the will of Hashem. Hashem is deciding everything. He is on charge and on top on all of the actions. No matter what happens in this world happens in the will of Hashem. But from the other side, it's written and it's a known fact as strong as the first one that there is no one except of Him, that you have a free choice. And if you have a free choice, it means that you're setting and deciding things about your destiny, that you're making changes in the creation, that you're making things happen by making those decisions. And to understand those two things together, how it can work, is impossible. Not only you cannot grab it, I cannot grab it. The ancient righteous ones couldn't grab it as well. Moshe Rabbeinu, the leader, the main leader, the biggest prophet of them all, asked Hashem, How can it be? Teach me your ways. I can see righteous people that are suffering and being punished. I saw wicked people, evil people that are being rewarded. How can it be? A righteous man that is suffering and an evil man that is enjoying life. How can it be? Even those ancient ones couldn't understand it. But when Hashem, the creator of the universe, said both of those things, so we need to believe that it works like that. That those two, two of those realities, somehow another wonder of Hashem are taking place in the same time, even though that we cannot see it. Even though that we cannot understand it. Even though that sometimes it's so hard even to accept it. But we must believe 
There is an amazing advice on how to work with those two different mindsets, those two different beliefs. You need to know that there is no one except of Hashem when you look at your past and when you look at your future. You know there is no one except of Hashem. Hashem, He will decide what will happen with me and my destiny is in the hands of the unconditional, the, the love of the, of the Almighty that is an unconditional love. I'm in His hands. His love will set my destiny. And on my past, when I'm looking behind and I see what that I've been through, what that I went through, I need to believe and to know that Hashem decided and took those decisions for me and He set my past to be as it is, as it was. But about the present, when we are looking at our lives right now, at the present, we have the free choice. Now you can choose. But one second later, when you look back, that's it. It was all from Hashem. Now you can do as much as you can to do the best that you can, to use all your skills, all your power, your wisdom, your, your talents, your abilities, everything. Now you can decide. Now the free will is available for you to use. But when you look at the past, or when you look at the future, you cannot choose. You cannot choose what will happen in 20 years, and you cannot choose where you born and where you grew up. You cannot choose in the past. So in the past and in the future, you are forcing your mind to believe that it been set by the Almighty. And in the present, I will do the best that I can, to do as much as I can, as much good as I can, to fix the world and to make a change in the world. And it's in our power. And we must not give up on that faith that we can make changes in the world. You don't know the power of prayer. We don't know. The Gemara is saying to us, the verse is saying, Kerum zulut libne adam. There are things that are in the peak of the world, highest things of them all, and people disrespect them. People are not appreciating those things enough. And Rashi is saying, like as prayer, that is the highest thing of them all, and people are not appreciating it. <coughs> we don't understand how great is that tool that we receive which wars we can win, which huge challenges we can overpower. We can complete things that are beyond the power of our imagination. We don't know which kind of redemption we can bring with our simplicity, simple, honest prayers that will come out from our mouths. You think, who am I? You're criticizing yourself. I'm not learning enough, I'm not waking up early enough, I'm not doing enough, I'm not rich enough, I'm not honest enough, I'm not, I don't know what, not humble enough. You don't know. You don't know your spiritual level. You think you know. You think that you know. Because you fell in that trap of your evil inclination that is talking gossip and filthy things about you from day first. Using your parents and your brothers and sisters, your friends, your teachers, your tutors, your companies to destroy your self-esteem for years. Destroying your love to yourself, your appreciation to yourself. Making you think that you are a physical body. Telling you that you're short, that you're tall. That you're brown, that you're bright, that you're wise, that you're not, that you have, that you don't have. And the truth is that you're not aware to your spiritual qualities, to your real nature, that you're a lightning. 
that you are brighter than the sun, that your soul is coming from a place that is only spiritual and physicality cannot trap it, cannot hold it, cannot grab it, cannot surround it. This world is an illusion. It's the world of lie, Alma de Shikra. And we must not fall in that lie to think that we are something. We are above things. We are above the place. When you're screaming here from the bottom of your heart, the voice of your soul is going in the high worlds and shaking the worlds and the sky and heaven. And no one can stop your prayers from rising to the crown of the king. And why all the tears and all the bloodshed and the sorrow and the sweat and the prayers of our ancestors were not enough <coughs> to bring complete redemption yet? Why? Because if the redemption would take place 200 years ago or 70 years ago, we wouldn't be redeemed. Our neglected souls, our broken, cracked souls wouldn't be redeemed. We wouldn't stand in the tests of the Holocaust. We wouldn't stand in those challenges of 200 years ago. We don't have that power. We have a different power. We have the power to survive in this generation. And in this generation, when you're just surviving, when you're just not killing yourself, when you're just holding on to the tiniest thing of purity, of holiness, you're illuminating worlds of darkness. You're waking up souls from complete despair. You're saving souls that are drowning for generations without even knowing it. Because we're all attached and well connected from within and all of our souls are an amazing spider web of holiness and purity as one man, as one person, with one heart. And when you are holding on and not giving up, by that you're strengthening your friends and giving them power without knowing them at all, without hearing about them at all. And suddenly they're finding advice and reasons not to go lower and not to give up, and it's your merit, and it's in your power. Because all of our souls are coming from the soul of Adam Arishon, from the first man, and from his wife Eve, Chavai Menu, that before of the separation they were one. They came down to this world as one person. And then came the time that Hashem decided to cut them, to separate them to two individuals because the test of them, Adam Arishon couldn't live his life like that, not to see his wife. His wife was in the other side of his body and they were facing to different directions and they wanted to meet up. They wanted to see each other face to face. So Hashem had to cut them. And he made a surgery and cut them to two. And from those two souls that are actually one in the source, we came down to this world, separated and broken and challenged. And need to face many difficulties and feel so separated from the source, from who that we are, from who that we feel that we are, from who that we know that we are feel so disoriented, so disconnected, so miserable, so close to despair. But the light of hope, the inner understanding is still shining from within. And souls like us that are not willing to give up, that are going and spreading words of faith in the world, cheering up our beloved ones, making phone calls to people and telling them good words, words of chizuk, I love you my friend, I love you my brother, my sister, I'm with you, don't give up. People like us are those ones that will deliver the complete redemption to the last generation. There is no one else in the world that you can count on except of yourself. 
So count on yourself and bring redemption. Count on yourself and deliver the news. Bring that new spirit to the world. You think that you're not as good as who? I saw huge cedar trees that fell. I saw huge righteous people that messed up big time. I saw big and important people that act like lousy children. I saw it with my eyes. People that I admired, that I loved, were so miserable. Chasing after money and chasing after honor and after lust and silly desires. Acting foolish. Betraying their own siblings, their own wives. I saw those things with my eyes. Not afraid to say it, not here and not in heaven's court. To think that you are worse than someone else, it's a mistake. You don't know who you are. And you don't know where, from which branch you're coming. And you don't know who your real ancestors were. And you don't know from which place in the throne of honor your soul is carved. You don't know the greatness and real value of your soul. You don't have a clue who you are and what is your real value. You don't know which changes you can make in the world. You just keep on falling in the same patterns that your ancestor failed in. Criticizing and hating and blaming yourself for no reason. Your body is failing because it's a physical body. You can buy the most expensive car and take it after three months to the garage or in the next day. You can buy the biggest, most wonderful property and your sewer can leak. And you'll have horrible problems with electricity. And you pay thousands and thousands and thousands for the new system. And it doesn't work because it's physical. And Hashem will keep on failing the physical systems until we will learn not to count on them. And not to fall into that imagination of physicality like it got some existence. It does not. Hashem pakadet Sarah. Hashem gave children to Sarah. She was 100. Her husband was 100. They couldn't bring children to the world. Hashem gave children. Hashem will give you your children that you need. The salvations that you need. Avraham Avinu refused to receive the tiniest, tiniest reward on his wars, fighting. He didn't want no one to have that ability to say, I gave money to Avraham. Avraham said, only Hashem supplies my needs. Only Hashem supplies my needs. For 40 years in the desert. We don't know what was the height of Abram. What was the color of his face. We don't know if Sarah, his wife, she was blonde or brunette. Because it's not important. If they were skinny or fat, tall or short. It's nonsense. So when you're criticizing yourself on your shape and your figure, it's only because that you misinterpret the real purpose of life. That you think that those things matter. They don't. What that is matter is who that you are inside and that you will express it and go and spread the truth. The truth that the Creator treasured inside of you. You have your way of presenting your truth, and I have mine. I cannot present your truth. I can barely present mine. And I'm working very hard for that. Work hard to express yours. Because that what that been given to you was a beam of light of the Creator. That's your soul. Your soul is part of heaven from above. Chelek <laughs> eloka And if you are hiding and denying yourself 
and not expressing yourself, you're blocking the light of Hashem that's been given to you to share. So share. Share your thoughts. Share your emotions, your feelings, your logic, your intuition. And believe in yourself that you have an important job, mission. And go and do it. And complete it. And don't rest until Mashiach will come and knock on the doors. If you think that you are not affecting time of redemption, so again you're wrong. Because like we said, all of our souls are connected. And Mashiach is our heart. Mashiach is our eyes. Mashiach is our mind. Mashiach is our leader. He's part of us. If the nation is in depression, Mashiach is down with them. But if we are rising from the depths and we're not giving up and we're climbing one step after the next, giving a hand to our beloved ones, supporting them and helping them and pushing them, you might push Mashiach for his success. And you don't know that because we don't know who Mashiach is. And we don't know who is Mashiach's community and where will be his shul and where they're going to daven. You don't have a clue. I don't have a clue. I do have many followers that think that they are Mashiach. That's I do. (laughs) But one of them sent me a message a few days ago in the middle of the night. I'm busy in my Bodedut. And he's texting me. Do you know who I am? I told him, no. And then he explained who he is, at least who he thinks he is, and I respect it. And then he asked me, do you believe? So I told him, look, I'm in a problem. Texting. Texting in it, but they do it as a Hasid blaster. (laughs) Such a lousy Hasid. I told him, look, I'm in a problem. I have at least 100 people that texted me the same message, like they had visions, they saw the crown, they were talking to what I, I'm like, I don't know, I'm not saying no, but like, who I'm gonna follow, you or him? I'm like, I have too many. So, you know, I'm doing my job and I bless you to succeed in your work. And hopefully like, yes, go. <laughs> Go for it. Like you on Facebook, subscribe to you on YouTube, whatever. Like, I have my job. I don't know who Mashiach is. I know I have my job. I know that in my place, I have a lot to do. I have many things to work on. If it's with my wife, if it's with my children, if it's in our house, if it's with the immigration lawyers, if it's with our issues. We're stuck in life. We're in the middle of our life, working. We have our friends, we have our students, we have a virtual community that we're trying to uplift. We're working. I don't know who Mashiach is. And the truth is, I couldn't care less. Like, really. If I hear Mashiach is here, I have the blessing, I have the, the six blessings that every person should carry in his pocket. I have too many pockets. But I have it with me. You have six blessings that you must bless. Oh, this is another pocket. <laughs> yeah, no, but I have it, I have it. Here it is. I'm ready. When Mashiach will come, I'll tell you now the blessings, what you need to have. You can print it for yourselves, you can download it online. Blessings that you need to say when you see the face of Mashiach. Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Gaal Yisrael. Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Shechiyan Vikiman Vigyanu Lazman Azeh. Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Shechalak Mechokhmato Lireav. That gave from his wisdom to, to his beloved ones, to the one that believed in him. Baruch Ata Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam Shechalak Mechokhmato Lireav. That gave from his honor to his, to his righteous ones. That you know the secrets. Hashem, He knows the secrets. He knows who Mashiach is. And I know that Elijah, the prophet, Eliyahu Navi, He will come and He will tell us who Mashiach is. And we're just waiting till that day. We're going to hear the blow of Shofar. 
It's gonna be a big noise. It's gonna be on on the internet. Don't worry, you you're gonna get the notifications and everything. Yes, thank God. And that's it. And like, except of like, even when Mashiach will come. Okay, so now he came. So okay, you immediately gonna download the blessings and everything. You're gonna have it on your phone. You'll see him. You say it, all the brachot, everything. And then what? What do you think that will happen next? You need to go back home and let it tell you, oh, my husband, you don't know, I just saw Mashiach. Oh, really? I just, I really, I also I saw him. Like, normal life, like, Olam came in a good way. It will be better. It will be nicer. You won't have no more sorrow, no more pain. When Mashiach will be here, his prayers will be answered and things will go into wonderful places. Redemption. But life will continue. You will have to keep on doing certain things that you do on a daily basis with your family, with your friends. I think will change. It will be improved. It will be better. Wonders will take place in your life. All your dreams will come true. But it will be inside of life. The world won't stop. So even after Mashiach came, okay, Mashiach came. We're so happy. We're going to say all the blessings. And then what? You need to be who you are. You need to go and talk to people. You need to go and spread the faith in the world. You need to go and, and hug your friends. You need to go and to be supportive and generous and kind and nice like, like today. So we're starting. We're just restarting our engines to do tshuva. It's to give yourself a chance. To give yourself another chance to know that the Creator, He loves you no matter who you are, no matter what you went through. And He was that one that took you in that path. He's that one that took you to that journey. He's that one that brought you to be who you are. And He gave you those challenges because He has that faith in you that you can succeed, that you can hold on to faith. That you will continue to believe in Him no matter what will happen. And that's our test in this generation. That we will not be rejected because of the thickness of that darkness. Not to let that darkness reject us. Don't be insulted. Don't be ashamed from life. Take it as a challenge. Take it as a test and pass that test. And don't give up. And don't back off, no matter what. Keep on praying and holding yourself strong, holding yourself together, connecting yourself to those ones that give you positive messages, that give you strength, those ones that are, are, are refreshing you and giving you hope. Connect yourself to them. Become one with them. Be a group with them, united with them. And go and spread the faith in the world. Strengthen others. Give other people that from that potion of life. Simple faith. The Creator, He loves you. I know Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said it. And for many years it was very hard for me to believe in it. Even to accept it. And to practice it. Really to live it. It was impossible. Today I'm doing it walking. I'll tell you. He said, even if I'm going to fail in the worst failure of them all, in the next day, you will see me doing everything as usual. I'll, I, I, won't, I won't stop. It won't destroy me. Even if I'm going to fail in the worst failure of them all. And me, that thank Hashem, I failed so many times in this lifetime, like I lived 7,000 years already, I failed. And I have so many students that I see that they also, Hashem is very generous with them to help them to fail big time. And I see that the loving kindness of Hashem is not stopping because of those failures. I know you have those crazy devils online that are saying that if you sinned, Hashem will kill you. You won't have a share in the world to come. From my simple life experience, I never experienced that. I saw in my eyes that there is always hope and that Hashem's love is always available for us and that we can always reconnect ourselves to Him. And I saw it. And I don't doubt it anymore at all. 
And today I know that no matter what I'm going to go through, no matter what I'm going to go through, nothing can take my faith from me. And I'll tell you why. Not because that my faith is strong, because like King David said, Va'anit fila, I am my faith. I am a believer. I believe. I don't have faith. Like that you don't have souls. You are souls. You don't have a soul. You are a soul. You don't have faith. You are faith. You are a shining beam of light, of belief. That's who you are. You are Hashem's light, trapped in a physical body. You're stuck. But who you are, you are Hashem's light. And whose light is the light of Hashem? The Hashem's light is Hashem. Hashem is shining. His light. His light, it's Him. You, as His soul, is a beam of light from His light that He measured into certain amount and sent it in a certain mission into a world of, 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 of limitations. Okay, He limited His light into your shape, into the vehicle that He gave you to take His holy chariot and spread His existence in the world. Now you and Him are one. If there is no one except of Him, you and Him and His wisdom are one unit with no separations. So we need to believe in that. To see it, it's hard. You need to go through many, many challenges and not to give up many, many times really to see it so clearly. But even without facing those challenges, you can f fight for that. You can work on that. To work on your faith. To express your inner faith, your simple faith. They've been given to you from the Almighty to use. And I believe in your power exactly like I believe in mine. I believe that I can bring complete redemption. I believe in that. If I wouldn't believe in that, I would be unemployed. <laughs> I would lie to you on daily basis, online, if I wouldn't have that faith that we together can bring Mashiach. I would lie to you. I have that solid faith with no doubt that we are those ones that will bring Mashiach. I don't have the slightest doubt about it. Or else I wouldn't do what I'm doing. I would go and do something else that I would believe in. Now you should believe in yourselves. You should believe in yourself. To know that you are here for a cause, for a noble cause. And that you can make a change in the world. So don't give up and don't ever stop that light. And believe in Hashem with all of your heart, with all of your passion, with all of your power. Go and spread the word faith in the world between everyone you know. Make everyone find their inner faith. Don't force faith. Let them find faith within. Let them find their own inner light that is already shining inside. Let them find it. Be a good, good example, a role model for them to see how you're facing your challenges, how you're trying to grow from your difficulties, how you're not giving up on hope. Talk about yourself. Share. And people will enjoy it your life experience and your wisdom and will find their own destiny and their own purpose in life. And then the peace will grow and the light will spread and complete redemption will come and take place in our lives. Today I can say for sure, for sure, I'm not backing off and I'm not going back and only because that I see that in His supervision on me, He's keep on supporting my destiny to believe in Him. He's keep on signing and sending messages and certain understandings to me 
to clarify for me from one day to the next that that path that he woke me up to recognize was the right path to walk in and that I just need to continue and to work on my faith in him and my confidence in him and not to be scared from people's thoughts and people's opinions and people's actions. Those are all curtains, all shadows of, of, of the imaginary world that we're trapped in. But the truth is one, and it's about to shine, that there is no one else except of Him, and that we need to do as much as we can. Thank you very much. And Hashem will answer all your prayers and requests immediately. Amen. Amen. Emuna Project is a unique word. I'll tell you why. Because emuna, you can write it with an H and without an H. And what's the difference between emuna with an H to emuna without an H? If you spell emuna in Hebrew, in the holy language, without hey in the end, so you have the word emun, trust. But when you add the letter hey in the end, so then you have faith, emuna. And emunah is higher because he represents Hashem. Trust, the person can trust himself. But emunah is in Hashem. Faith is in the Creator. And that's why we chose that name emunah with an H in the end. That you're not going to forget Hashem. So please help us to spread those pearls of wisdom to all of our potential friends those ones that we were not able to reach out to yet and share our posts and help and save souls of other people with that refreshing message and may from heaven they will bless you and answer all your dreams and all your holy desires to come true amen, amen. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit emuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.